Hi, everyone. My name is Nadine Rambo, and this is Dr. Jennifer Rosales, and we are from the California Institute of the Arts Community Arts Partnership. We're going to be talking today about building a sustained culture of arts integration. And I'll start off our talk, and then I will turn everything over to um, Jennifer, who will talk with you a little bit about data and some of the artwork that the students created as a, as a result of this program. So, First, for those of you who are maybe not from the Southern California region, and I know that we do have some in the uh, audience today, the California Institute of the Arts is a college here in uh, the Los Angeles County area. We provide instruction in all of the artistic disciplines imaginable at both the undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral levels. The Community Arts Partnership Program, the CalArts Community Arts Partnership, or CAP, is the arts education division of the CalArts um, California Institute of the Arts. And what we do through the CAP program is that we partner CalArts faculty, alumni, and student instructors to work at schools, social service agencies, and community centers throughout LA County. Uh, we provide tuition-free instruction, like I said, in all of the art forms um, for students both at the elementary, middle, and high school level. So, what we're going to hit, be talking about today is the Arts Integration Articulation Project, or what that is, what we call as the AIA program. And what this particular program is, it was funded by the Los Angeles Fund for Public Education, is an initiative to not only bring arts integration into a, our partner public schools, but also to work on articulation. So, basically working on a feeder pattern of schools, both a middle school and a, high, a, a middle school that feeds into a high school, so that we could track the students over time. So, how did the program specifically work? We had both the feeder pattern of schools, both the middle school and the high school. We had a linkage between a middle school, high school, and a college, which is CalArts. We also had multiple core subjects and artistic disciplines. So we worked with science, math, English, social studies, slash history. And then on the CalArts side, we provided instruction in animation, dance, visual art, and music. There was collaborative lesson planning between all groups, both the public school teachers as well as the um, teachers from CalArts. We had professional development sessions that were really teacher-centered. What we were really looking to do was to make sure that the content that we chose was actually driven by what the teachers themselves wanted to learn. In addition to that, we created these small learning communities. What was really important to think about in constructing this program is that being a college was actually, in some ways, to our detriment. Um, because we were viewed as an institution of higher education that was sometimes viewed as also being elite, okay? Um, and some of the teachers felt a little bit intimidated by working with an institution of higher education that is recognized nationally. Um, we had teachers who felt in competition um, with our instructors who sometimes felt a little bit of resentment from someone coming down from on high to tell them what to do in their classroom. This was something that we took into consideration and really had to listen to and think about how would we account for this in the structural design. And part of that was thinking about this issue around the small learning community. What we said from the very first day was we are here to learn as well. We here from CalArts also want to learn with you about how to do this work. Sure, we've been doing a lot of arts education for 26 years, but we were new to this. And we have been doing a lot of work in the arts and, being, and, and producing a lot of really successful alumni. But using the arts with like a core subject area was new to us. And we said, we are learners, you're going to teach us. And then together, we want to be able to come out and talk about the effectiveness of what it is that we're doing. So these were our goals. These goals were developed with um, both the high school and the middle school, as well as with CalArts. We wanted to make sure that we were building a sustained culture of arts integration, one that would combine both the individual and institutional developmental goals uh, to enhance the work and performance of the teachers as well as the um, student learning outcomes for each school. In addition to that, we wanted to help build more permanent and sustainable efforts in arts integration in the region. So now you can imagine, this is big, right? Because we weren't gonna bite off something small. We had to go big. I remember the day that I came up with this idea and I was just like, oh my goodness. And then actually it's been really, really successful. I'm very pleased with this project. So I want to focus specifically in, let's think about this kind of as a car. Arts integration and all of the wonderful things that are happening is the car. I say it's a Corvette, all right? And it looks really good. What we're going to really talk about today is the engine. 
right? We're gonna peel back and take a look at what the engine looks like. How do you build a sustained culture that actually powers what it is what you're doing with the arts integration? So there's a couple of things that we had to keep in mind. One thing was school culture. And essentially what we had to think about was there was already an existing school culture that we were walking into from the very beginning. This school culture was valuable to a lot of people. They helped create it. It maintained their relationships with one another. It maintained their relationships with the students and obviously had yielded some success. We were coming into an already created system. Um, and that created the identity of the institution, but it also made it resistant to change. Because all of a sudden, anything coming in means not just you want me to change how I work, you want me to change how I think, you want me to change my lesson plans, you want me to change how I relate to people, how I relate to my students. It's a lot of work to make this happen. And those defense mechanisms pop right up. Secondly, we wanted to think about when we were thinking about this idea of culture, we wanted to look at many different components of culture of school culture, so policies and procedures, traditions and routines that were already in place. In addition, everyone who participates in the school culture comes to the school with their own culture, right? So not only their ethnic, their racial, economic culture, but all of these are feeding into the process as well. And then we have the social and intellectual culture of that institution of both of these institutions. Both of these institutions though, both the middle school and the high school, the thing that's really important to know is that they hadn't really in the beginning started ever really working together, um, which was really interesting. There was some feeder pattern going on, but not too much discussion. So when we thought about how to change culture, we were thinking about a many, many different things, both strong leadership, um, making sure that we had strong leadership buy-in, everyone's been talking about that. We also wanted to make sure that it was a safe learning climate, not just for the students, but for the teachers as well, for them to be able to learn and make mistakes and to do that and to make those mistakes in front of their own students, okay? In addition to that, we wanted to make sure that there were trusting relationships between all parties, that we could be honest. One of the things I think that was the most interesting and eye-opening moments to me was when teachers would look at me and say, you know, I always wanted to be an artist. Um, and I never, I never really had the resources to do that. And I, you know, I've just gotten, I'm, I've been in this job for 30 years and no one's really ever paid attention to me and, and the eyes getting big and bigger and bigger. Um, and to be able to have someone professionally tell me that and to hold that in a space, to be able to listen and say, okay, how can we meet your needs? That takes a lot of, I think Danielle was talking about empathy. This really pushed it quite a bit to work with adults in this way. And also we wanted to make sure that we focused on the teaching capacity of the specific teachers and their ability for leadership, those who really wanted to take the next step forward in their own development. Okay, so at every stage of the development of this program, we started thinking about issues of culture and how we could institute change long-term in arts integration. So even in our exploration stage, we were thinking about how we could involve all of the, the teachers at the grassroots level. How could we make sure that there were institutional alignments between all three entities? So this is what was happening at the middle school. The middle school specifically said, you know what, we want to create a performing arts magnet. We want to do that. We're developing a strategic plan. You guys fit into our, our plans in that way. So we said, that's great. The high school specifically was having a problem around retention. They just couldn't keep the students coming, coming back from year to year to year. And they said, we have to up our game on the way that we're doing instruction. Alignment. Now what about for a college? Let's be honest, we're college, we're free. We don't have to think about all those K through 12 issues, right? But we had some of our own objectives that we were trying to achieve. And one of the big ones um, was around being able to integrate um, both uh, kind of do more interdisciplinary work at CalArts. The CAP program, while it had been around for 26 years, there was an opportunity presented to us to think about how we could become a nexus for all of the schools to be able to do interdisciplinary work. And therefore, this program started to align really well with that. And all of a sudden, for all of these different strategies, we had alignment in our ability to be able to work together. Okay, so what was it? It was this. It was four lead instructors and one pedagogy spe specialist from Cal CalArts, 
partnering with eight teachers from Patrick Henry and four um, teachers from Van Nuys High School to engage 475 students in lessons that integrated four core subjects with four art forms. The public school teachers participated in professional development sessions, model lessons with our artists. They also received mentoring and support. Um, in general, our artists were coming and working with this, the teachers maybe about 16 um, 16 times during the year, during the academic year, as well as there were professional development sessions, lots of phone calling, lots of hand holding going on through the whole entire process. So now I'm going to turn the talk over to Jennifer Rosales. So we wanted to think about this project in terms of sustainability. What happens when we leave? We want the arts integration culture within the school to be present and move forward. So one of the things we were thinking about is how are the teachers changing in terms of thinking? And what we found is that they really felt like things were different now. Um, they were thinking new thoughts, they were combining new things, they were implementing new lessons, and they were revising old lessons. Uh, one of the teachers said to us that he refers to himself as a dinosaur, and yet he's also saying that he's learning new things and he's doing new things. So we were excited um, with kind of some of the preliminary data that we've been, we've been getting. What does thinking, how does thinking translate into practice? We had to see what does this look like in the classroom? So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some examples from a math class, a special education class, a social studies class, and a science class. Um, so we're about to see um, some work performed or created by some math students at Van Nuys High School. It started with a graph. They were learning linear graphing in their ninth grade math class. So what our music teaching artists uh, were able to figure out with the math teacher was that they were going to use the y-axis, and the y-axis was going to be pitch. And so that would stand for notes. And then the x-axis was going to be time. So y equals 0 was going to be the C note. And x equals 1 would be 1 second. And so students would graph different slopes and create different intercepts at the same time that they would be creating scale patterns. And so students would get together in groups of four and create those mini songs you heard um, through the graph. And then they would get on their pianos, on their iPad, their virtual pianos, and they would play that for each other. And then as a class, they would talk about um, which scale patterns were used and what that looked like as a graph afterwards. This class also did a pretty cool project, which was parabolas and acoustics. And um, I wanted to show you guys kind of an example of what the lesson plan looked like. Um, but before I get into that, what they did is uh, the math teacher taught them how to graph parabolas. And then our teaching artist, who's an electric music um, student at CalArts, electronic music student, came in and taught them about acoustics. So they learned about frequency. They learned about um, amplifying sound waves. They learned about how different objects affect different sounds. And then they created a 3D parabola out of paper and tape. And they were able to test different, um, different uh, principles of acoustics using this 3D parabola they created. Um, there was also an assessment component to this. They were given a worksheet. They had to answer specific questions. Um, and then there was also kind of an informal conversation about this as well. Um, so what we were trying to work on in year two of this project was to make sure that what we had was um, standards that were both common core for the math, math um, element and also VAPA. So we were also looking at visual and performing arts standards. So the idea was is that we were connecting both of those because as discussed earlier, um, arts, the importance of learning those art skills was just as important as learning those math skills. And we wanted to make sure that both were being showcased in this project. So the next uh, project is a special education project um, we did at the middle school, Patrick Henry. And what we did, this was also a math project, is that the visual arts uh, teaching artist came in and she, uh, the teacher was teaching negative and positive number scales. And so she connected that to the color spectrum. And they taught them the color spectrum. And then they coded the numbers based on colors. And they took a Kaczynski painting, and they took out the colors and put in the coded numbers. And then they took all of those numbers, and they added them up 
to create a number. And what was really awesome about this one is this is, a, uh, according to the, the teacher and the school, this is a student that the assistant principal said spends pretty much every week in her office and doesn't bring a book to class. So when the teacher presented this work, the school was dumbfounded and really inspired to continue to keep working with us. We did a social studies project as well um, with music at Patrick Henry. And this was a whole year long project. The teacher was really motivated to work with our music artist. And uh, it was a US history class for seventh graders. And what they did is they were going to create a trajectory of African American music within US history. So they started with West African drumming. They taught them um, about oral learning and call and response and rhythmic syn syncopation. And they, we brought in a ton of drums from West Africa and taught the kids how to dance and to play um, to these, uh, to the, I've got a clip and I don't know if we'll have time to show it um, afterwards. But um, we, um, after they did that, they moved into slavery. And uh, the teacher used um, original documents written by slaves um, to teach kind of the students about slavery. And then the music teacher taught them about um, creating slave songs. And then they created their own slave songs based on this original documentation. Um, from there, they moved on to the Underground Railroad. And they created a musical scavenger hunt using music clues to kind of code their way through. And then um, in the spring semester, they moved on to jazz and blues. And um, they learned blues original form. They learned how to play the piano and the guitar on GarageBand on their iPads. And then they created their own jazz songs um, for, from the perspective of the famous jazz musician they were assigned. Um, so these two teachers work together very, very well. And then science and animation. So at Van Nuys High School, we worked with a biology teacher and uh, an animation and a film video teaching artist. And they were learning about uh, DNA synthesis and multiplication. Um, and so they cre they, we came in and taught them about animation um, in the 13 steps to animation, squash and, squash and stretch, anticipation, overlapping action. And they created storyboards. And then they also created... Um, actual stop motion films that uh, showed the, the process. is that 88% of our teachers have said that they feel they can use what we taught them in professional development sessions, use the lesson planning, and use the um, assessment uh, help that we've given them to be able to go off and do this independently. And then uh, regarding what Sam said earlier, in terms of technology, especially at the high school level, we've seen a massive increase in abilities. Um, and so 100% of them now feel that they can go out there and use their iPads um, and create lessons independently without us as well. So I'm going to turn this over to Nadine to kind of sum up all of this and what, it happens, what happens at the full school level. So um, one of the interesting things about this project is that the success that the teachers were actually having in the classroom actually started to reinforce their behavior. Um, when they saw that the teachers were, that the students were actually learning, um, when they saw that lessons that were actually difficult for them normally in the past suddenly became a lot easier, it started to reinforce their willingness to continue to integrate the arts into their um, subject matter. So we started really like, taking a look at some of those different areas that, um, that seemed to us to be a sign that culture shifts were happening 
at both the high school and the middle school. Specifically, we were looking at environment. So we heard from Patrick Henry Middle School that they are now hiring more arts instructors to work at the school. And in fact, the idea is moving forward that these arts instructors will become part of the core team, working both with the CalArts instructors as well as the core subject teachers so that we can also work to sustain the program over time once CalArts pulls out. In addition, we started to see changes in the way that they were using time. So now what became the case was that people talked about how they could actually build this into their curriculum to be able to partner together. One the comment that we got a lot was the teachers were saying, we don't actually have time to go in and see what the other person is doing. We don't have time to actually sit down and make sure that our curricula are kind of actually cohering together and think about um, the way that they can work better. Um, so they started talking about how they could do that. In addition, their use of space at the school started to change as well. So all of a sudden, the English teacher is saying, you know, I need to reserve the dance studio here at, at school so that I can use that for my particular um, class, which we thought was amazing. In addition to that, we see a change in activities. So we see not only that the teachers themselves are incorporating this work independently on their own, um, that they're taking lesson plans that they developed and doing it and then coming back to the artists and say, see, this is what I've come up with even without you today, um, which we thought was actually really heartening because this is a three year project. And the whole point is to make sure that once we depart, that they can continue to keep this going. Um, in addition, we saw a change in relationships. I think the young gen the gentleman in the blue from um, Eureka had talked about this, that there was a change in the relationships between the um, teachers and the students themselves. Something that was really very heartening to us was a particular teacher um, of African American descent who talked about specifically the students who were learning about African American culture. And he said, normally when I teach a lesson plan about slavery, it's very uncomfortable in the classroom. He said, normally, they don't really want to listen. They don't want to go for that level of content. And it's really hard for me. He was very honest about it. He said, it's very hard for me to witness that. He said, but as a result of this program, the students started really getting into telling the stories of slaves. They were also talking a lot about African-American culture in ways that they thought that perhaps I didn't even know. He said, they were coming to me, talking to me about Ma Rainey. They were coming to me talking to me about, you know, Bessie Smith, as if I didn't know about these things. And for me to be able to share my culture with a group of students that normally would dismiss it really touched him quite a bit. And so that reinforced his learning. I think something that's really interesting about this particular teacher was this was a teacher who, when we first observed him, him teaching in the beginning, he was someone who read from his book. And now, by the end of his class, um, which we just had, we had their culmination about two weeks ago, he was dressed up in African garb. He was sitting there performing with the students as they did their own dances. He was so proud to get up out of that seat. In addition to that, um, the last area where we're seeing a lot of movement is with the creativity. Obviously, you can see some of the work here um, that the students made, but we're moving to a point where Beyond just arts integration and beyond this idea that people are able to express themselves through art, people are starting to actually move to be able to express themselves through math, right? Through English, through social studies. They're identifying content and really imbibing it with their own meaning. And it didn't matter if it was art or a course subject. Something that was really interesting and what we really like a lot at CalArts is when students start to create original work. And so we had moments where kids were actually creating their own instruments and then playing the parabola off of that. That level of extension of thinking and play is really advanced creativity. We're starting to see that as well. So there is a culture shift. I think the thing about um, culture is that uh, there's this famous saying in anthropology that a fish cannot see water. It's just the environment that it's in. And so now for us to be able to see that the culture is shifting, that other teachers are now inquiring about um, how this project works with current teachers who are in it and asking, can I be a part of it, means that we're having some success. I expect that we're going into our third year of the program. We will continue to assess this and probably be able to really develop some rubrics um, and um, some data around cultural shifts that are happening in the program. 
Thank you.